Hello everybody and welcome back. This is not a pro gardener here. We are in zone 6B. What we're going to be doing today is you're going to see us harvest some of our greens. I think some of the kale's ready, but I know that our Swiss chard is ready. So we'll show you how we're going to we'll show you how we're going to do that. And then we're going to be discussing the beet curly top virus, specifically for our tomatoes. It's about it's May 17th. It's 79 degrees outside. Full sun. It's hot. Got them cold season crops stressing a little bit today, which got me a little concerned, but hopefully we can just do a little rain dance or something and get them to pull through. Hopefully we can get them to pull through. Now, the reason we're going to be doing this is we need to clear out the infected plants. And the reason we are harvesting this stuff is probably for dinner. We're going to be using this stuff, making some more greens, Usually we do spinach, as you may have seen one of our videos, we've done spinach, but this time we're going to be doing our Swiss chard and maybe some kale mixed in there, or maybe make a small salad, something like that. So we're going to go ahead and talk about it, and then you'll see me harvest some of this stuff out of the garden, put it to good use. All right, so we're going to pip up a little video here. You're going to see our tomato plants and the curly tops on it. It was a lot more pronounced when they were smaller, but as they have grown the last couple of days, it's been raining really heavy, so I haven't had a chance to, to replace these plants just yet. So this is what they look like. And you might see some of them leaf curl or the dwarfing of the leaves, and you can tell that they're just smaller and they don't look quite right. That is the beet curly top virus, which is what I have come to discover that it is. I've had this here before, about four or so years ago, practically when I first started gardening in this spot out here. I did have the same exact problem where the top of the tomato plant was affected and not everything else. It was just the tops, you know? So the tomato curly top virus, as I put it, or as Google would put it, I'll put the information down in the description below on the Oklahoma State University Extension office, I guess it is that they have there. They have information on this or they did a study on this. I'm not, it's kind of not quite sure what this is, but it's, it's good information about this virus, and it tells you all about it. So I'm going to put that down in the description below, so if you want to check that out or see what their findings were on this stuff as well. So we're going to give you a brief edit of the whole information that they have on that website there. And on their findings of the beet curly top virus, it hosts normally tomatoes, beans, peppers, spinach, beets, or cucurbits. The symptoms are dwarfed leaves, which as you'll see in the video that I have, they look like they're dwarfed, they're crinkled, rolled inward, or cupped upward. The veins on the other underside of the leaf is a purple discoloration as well. The beet curly top virus is transmitted from plant to plant by the beet leaf hopper and the circulifer tenulus. Both the virus and the beet leaf hopper have a very wide host range. Once acquired by the beet leaf hopper, it is carried for the rest of its life. Thus, a long distance is spread. That's common because they just carry it throughout their life. Only brief feeding periods are required for the leafhopper to acquire this virus. In minutes, it can happen. And it's transmitted to the new plants. The plants begin to show symptoms about 7 to 14 days after they are first infected by the leafhopper. That's where the problem lies, because by the time you see it, you're like, what's going on? Why are they just getting all dwarfed leaves on them, and they're curling up, and it just looks just like it's just affecting the top of the plant? The affected plants do not recover or die. They remain stunted without setting additional fruit. Now, that's a problem. You work hard to put all these plants in. You don't have the money to replace the plants. Now, you got to pull them out of the ground. Now, some people can choose to leave them in, but... If you leave them in that virus, let's say another beet leaf hopper bites your plant and it spreads it to the rest of your plants. Could happen, could possibly happen. I mean, it only takes minutes for them to bite and feed on your plant in order to take it and spread it. And that's trouble because even if you spray with pesticides and they take one bite, it still spreads the virus. So it's, it's, a, it's a huge problem. So I'm getting these plants out of here. I'm ripping them up. And this is a good reason, like, I, like I've like i preached before on seed starting extra tomato plants, I still have, I think, just enough for me to replace these plants with exactly what I have, which is nice. They're all not affected. 
which is a huge for me because it's been over seven to 14 days since they started changing. The rest of them are fine. Most of them are affected, so I gotta cull those. But this is why you should have a regimen of spraying your plants. I sprayed them maybe seven days before they started showing symptoms of this. And I think that's what kind of saved me from having everything else get this virus. So like I'm keeping my spray regimen up, I'm gonna be spraying practically every week to try to help protect or keep a huge infection going on through the rest of those plants that I listed that can be host to those virus. Now control, as they said on their findings that the Management of the curly top bees is difficult. Spraying tomatoes with insecticide, insecticides does not control the disease because the leaf hoppers migrate from long distant places and they don't reproduce or remain in the tomato field. So they feed and then they're gone. And then seven to 14 days, you're starting to see the after effects and you're just like, what's going on? Unfortunately, this was just bad luck on our part to get this virus. So the only thing I can do is cull every plant that has this virus. I'm going to burn them. Something to make sure this virus does not get spread to anybody else or to any of the rest of my plants here. Going to get rid of them, clean them up, get everything I can out of here. And then I'm probably going to, I'll rip them up later with some gloves on or something like that. And try to help keep it contained somehow. Just an unfortunate thing here, and we're lucky that we have extra plants. For people that didn't have extra plants and something like this happens, that's probably devastating. And like I said, by the time the, by the, time the migrating leafhoppers succumb to an insecticide, they've already transmitted the virus, transmitted the virus to the tomatoes. So we have to clear out all these disease plants, as you've probably seen, and we will be replacing as soon as possible. So we're kind of set back on that, and I think it's just the luck of the draw, guys. That's just kind of how it happened for us. I mean, we're lucky that we have extra plants, so just a little bit of a loss. So now we're now we're going to take you out and show you the Swiss chard and how we harvest it, get all that harvested, and we might be able to harvest some of our kale and stuff too. I don't know. We'll take a look at it. So let's go ahead and check it out. everybody so this is our swiss chard now the leaves can get a lot bigger than this and if they do you want to probably pull that spine out of there and since we have probably medium sized leaves medium sized leaves on these i'll check them out and see if they get kind of stringy or anything on those we'll see if they get stringy or anything on these uh leaves you know sometimes when that stem gets big sometimes people don't want to eat that because it could get those strings or fibers in there so what we're going to do we're going to find a plant and we're just going to harvest the outside leaves off of these. You don't want to just start cutting everything. We're just going to harvest the outside leaves. Leave a couple on the inside so it can keep regrowing. And you just harvest as needed. Sometimes if you've got a bunch of plants like I do, which to get a pot of greens, you kind of need a lot of plants anyway to fill and up once the pot you get about you a good handful of these plants, I'm just going to gather them up down here. I'm going to cut some of these stems off. It's a lot of stem to have to, to take up space in my bag, so I'm just going to cut some of them off. And then we're just going to fit these guys inside a bag here. I don't know if I'm gonna use them today or tomorrow, but I know it takes quite a bit of greens to fill up my pot, so I think this bed will be just the right size to fill up one of my pots. Just like that, that's one pretty big handful of greens. We're gonna get another one of these and then we'll move on and I'll do all, all right, this this later. is just about one row here. One row of this, I got three rows in here. Actually, I got two rows in here. 
And this is just about one row that I harvested. So now we're gonna go ahead and get this stuff inside so it doesn't get too hot in these plastic bags. And then we'll come back and get the rest of this and show you the kale. So let's go ahead and check it out. All right, let's go over here and check it out. And it looks like something dug up my, one of my honey nut squash. I only got two of those left now. I don't know if I'll be able to taste those this year or not, but I guess we'll see. Probably a squirrel. I have a lot of problems with squirrels doing that with my tomato plants when I first plant them. So here's the collards. Probably get some harvest off some of them too. And here's the kale. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna set you up right here and show you how we harvest these guys. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. All right, so this is what we're gonna do. Just gonna show you how we harvest these guys. And then I'm just gonna throw them in a bag. Get your bag open. Now you wanna leave these ones in the center alone, but these ones on the outside are fair game. So you just pull them down and break it off like that. And since these are still new transplants, you don't wanna rip the whole plant out of the ground. So just kind of be wary of what you're doing. You don't wanna rip this whole plant out of the ground because you can get a lot of harvest off this one plant. Just get them like that. Let's go over here to the next one. Just kind of break it down a little bit. Be careful not to break the whole plant in half because I have done that before. Then you can get these little ones off the bottom if you want to. And there's my first harvest from two plants. Then I can go down the rest of the row and get those. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish those off and then I'll show you this. All right, so for my collards, I'm gonna leave this bunch in the middle alone. So I'm just gonna start on the outside and work my way, get these smaller ones off. Don't want those. I'm just gonna break these off. Just the bigger ones on the outside. This is about the size that I like to get them. Just wanna come around and get these ones that are broken off the bottom. Get rid of those. And then you wanna get the bigger ones. And I usually leave about this little bitty bunch in the middle and two or three leaves on the outside and that's enough. And that's my first harvest off of these. We're gonna finish harvesting these and then we'll end the video. All right, so we got a pretty good haul here. So pretty much all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna clip all these stems off because I don't want these. And that's pretty much it. Didn't want those little stems. I just want these leaves for greens or a salad. Mix them in with some other stuff for dishes if I really need to. And I'm just gonna put them in here. That's a pretty big ball of greens right there. So now we're gonna get the collards and see what those look like. Just gonna try to fit them all in there. Pretty big handful. These last two in there. Got one bag each. All right, thanks for sticking with us and learning about all this stuff. Harvesting these vegetables. It's nice to be able to have a pot of greens for dinner. This is not a pro gardener here. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you next time out here in the garden. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.